now I can actually speak to the members of Congress and to their families. And so that's been a wonderful uh, side benefit of the <laughs> horrible impact on my life that Tiger King was. Could Carol Baskin be what brings Congress together? Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Yeah, that Carol Baskin. She's been working for more than a decade with big cat advocates on the Big Cat Public Safety Act, which would basically make it illegal to buy or sell or cuddle or get a photo with big cats that are endangered species and also huge cats that just shouldn't be in people's homes and basements, hoping to then get rid of this undercover but also legal industry of exploiting and selling big cats. We also talked with Tim Harrison in a brand new documentary, The Conservation Game, which totally blows the lid off of this whole thing with private zoos and people who have been exploiting these animals for far too long under the protections of current laws that are there. Now, what's interesting is the Big Cat Public Safety Act actually has more than 190 co-sponsors from both parties in the House and about two dozen from both parties in the Senate. So they're thinking it could really potentially pass soon and get to President Biden's desk. Now, the documentary does not have a public screening date yet, but they tell me it is coming. They were in town for a premiere event of it and then uh, some lobbying on the Hill. So here is our documentary conversation with Carol Baskin and Tim Harrison. So first of all, I want to thank you two for <laughs> stealing like 90 minutes of my day. I got the screener of the conservation game and I was like, I'm going to just, you know, pop around and like watch a couple clips. I couldn't stop. I watched the entire thing, nose the tail, and it was just so good. And then as you read on the website, like explosive and the ProPublica of, of cat video, of cat movies, it's so true. And as you were putting this together, did you realize what you were making is I guess my first question. You know, we've lived this for so many decades and knew about all of the exploitation that was going on with these animals. We just didn't know how it would be brought together in a powerful way that, that meets all of the things that you just said about it. Well, first of all, when I started, I wanted to imitate Jack Hanna. He was my hero when I was younger. I'm from Ohio. So that was kind of like, and I, I actually worked with him over the years, different things. So it was weird as I watched things go by and things change, people started using these endangered species, big cats, and then I didn't know where they went. And then as I became a public safety officer, as a police officer, I started hearing these stories of people saying, we got tigers in my basement. We got animals, you know, big cats in backyards. Where did they come from? And I started going to the auctions. That was my big aha, aha moment when I went to the auctions and saw the cats that were actually on these conservationist laps at the auctions being sold by the people that were supplying them for them. And when I thought that, I said, wait a minute, these are supposed to be endangered species. What are they doing in an auction in Mount Hope and Amish country of Ohio and being sold to anybody that wants them? And then I have to go out and rescue them in somebody's backyard after they become too big and they get a baptism in reality and realize that little tiger cub is not fun anymore. Everybody wants a tiger cub, but nobody wants a tiger. And then it ended up, that was my aha moment. It was kind of a, a mixture of different things coming all at once. And Carol, with you having your sanctuary and you doing what you do, when did you two first meet and what was that initially like? Because I would imagine in this world, not to use a pun, but there's a lot of probably like sniffing around that has to go on to make sure that you're all in it for the same good reasons. I actually came across Tim Harrison because I had seen a article in the paper about a cougar that was loose in Ohio and he had actually rescued the cougar rather than kill it because usually these cats end up being killed by law enforcement because they just don't know what else to do. Um, what are you hoping to from, from this? You're going to have members of Congress come. In the movie, you talk about you know Senator Portman um, being really pivotal in this whole thing. He's obviously not running for re-election. What do you hope that to achieve through Congress you know, this time around? Or is there anything you hope to achieve this time around? Well, for me, I think uh, Carol's the architect of the Big Cat Public Safety Act. And that is the tool that's gonna to get us where we need to go. No more breeding, no more you know, pet pay to play, no more private ownership, no more auctions of these things out to the general public. It's just respect for the animals and it's also for public safety because it's always the police are the first ones on the scene when a, a tiger gets loose in Austin or a tiger gets loose in Houston, Austin or Texas, anywhere. It's always the police department that has to show up first. Atlanta, Georgia, they had to shoot one near a bus stop 
as it came off Interstate 75. Nobody raises their hand and says, that's my tiger and I have it back. So we have an ability now to get some kind of legislation that protects the big cats and also the first responders and the public. So I believe this evening is gonna be very influential on getting us the legislation that we need. If you speak to the police chiefs and fire chiefs around the country like I do, they want some legislation, they can stop this. The Zanesville massacre happened in Ohio when they turned all those animals loose, 38 big cats on the city. That wouldn't have happened if we had somebody sign the legislation that was in effect. Those cats would have never been dead at this today. And, it's, and I think Tim is way too sweet when he says that I was the architect because this has been like every animal protection group you can imagine has been working together on this since 2011. So Carol, what is that like for you to be in Washington on, and on Capitol Hill now since you've had a minute in the spotlight with Dancing with the Stars and other things? Are you like received more um, readily now or are people like, hey, let's talk about Tiger King, but you're like, I wanna talk about this thing. How is your like street cred among Capitol Hill changed now that you've you've had this moment? I think it has given me more access than it ever did before. I was always welcome to talk to the legislative aides, but now I can actually speak to the members of Congress and to their families. And so that's been a wonderful uh, side benefit of the <laughs> horrible impact on my life that Tiger King was. Do you think this can happen now? I mean, there's so much going Absolutely. on on Capitol Hill, but it seems like there's bipartisan support in the House. Do you think that this Senate that we have now, this 50-50 Senate could do something? Actually, I thought it was gonna pass last year because we did pass the House with a two thirds vote, which is just remarkable given the, the climate last year, but it didn't have time to go before the Senate. So we just jumped right into it in January and we are further along than we've ever been. We have 191 co-sponsors in the House and I think 23 in the Senate and it's bipartisan. So I just know as soon as we get a hearing, it's gonna fly through. Yeah, so what does that look like? Because right now the Senate is, they've got the January 6th, they've got infrastructure, they've got voting rights, like they've got some really huge things that they're tackling. Do you think it actually, with this being something that's bipartisan that people on both sides could maybe agree about makes it easier to get through? This is something that people can agree about, that we need to end the practice of cub petting and private possession in, in the United States because we're going to lose the tiger in the wild if we don't get rid of this legal smoke screen for all of the illegal activity like poaching. And this planet needs tigers. We need wild cats in the wild. And this bill is going to make that possible for everybody. So I think it will pass this year. Tim, I, I'd like I to love say something too. Yeah, totally, go ahead. I would, I would like to say something too. We actually have the individuals that were against us on the film are now with us. So that's a huge, huge change. The conservation game has changed people's attitudes as you've seen, that, seen it yourself, but it gives them the tool to look at and say, yes, maybe I should say, listen to Carol. And she was right. We should go ahead and do this. Maybe we should listen to these other organizations and get some legislation passed because it's common sense law. So Tim, can you, I, I, I just loved the wall in the documentary of all the strings tying the tigers to different people and like trying to find the tigers. Do you have a sense of how many tigers there may or may not be in the Northern Virginia, Maryland, DC suburbs area like that we should be maybe concerned about or keeping an eye out on? But let's just put it to you this way. I, I like to tell people there's, I can't give you a number, there's an estimation, people say out there, organizations say there's 15,000 big cats in the United States of America that they know of. Take it from law enforcement, take it from a disaster trainer and preparer that goes out. I can only talk about the tip of the iceberg. If somebody says we have a problem here, that means there's a whole bunch of problem underneath that to build up to there. Where's the breeding couple that started this? Where's the brothers and sisters? Where's the, you see, if you see what I mean, it just keeps adding on and on and on. There's no way to say how much is in there. So if I find one tiger in West Virginia, where did it come from? And that's why we starting to talk about more as a group now, and people are asking questions, where do they come from? They come from originally from these breeding animals that started from these roadside zoos and private breeders. And Tim, I was so blown away by how you can track their stripes on some of them in spots like a fingerprint. Are, are you the exception are you like the only person who's able to do that or are there a whole bunch of you around the country who's trying to track these stripes and like find these tigers 
It's not the first time. There's a young lady in Australia does a beautiful job down there too. It can line up strikes. But we got uh, Jeff Kramer. Jeff Kramer's a master at it. And he can take those computers and work magic and line it up. He actually perfects it to the point that there is no question that's the Tiger Cup here and that's the adult Tiger there. As you saw in the film, there is no question. So as you're working things through Capitol Hill and you're trying to get national legislation, what does it look like post this film, the conservation game coming out? Because, you know, Carol Baskin can't go undercover <laughs> and try to find tigers <laughs> and neither can you now. So are there, without like, you know, giving up your assets, are there more of you who are trying to infiltrate these groups that you're aware of that you're working with? As soon as this bill passes, it's hard to hide a tiger. Right now, they can get away with the horrible things that they're doing because it's not illegal. What happens to these tigers and, how, and these other wild cats when this legislation passes? There's a provision in the law that says that people who have these animals can keep them if they want to. They just can't buy or breed more. But I expect that most of these people will dump them once they can't make money off of them and can't show off with the cubs. And so there are plenty of legitimate sanctuaries out there that these cats could go to. There's just no reason not to pass this bill. How do you know if a sanctuary is legitimate? You, you know, a lot of acronyms get thrown around in the documentary, but if somebody is a tourist and they see big cat sanctuary, you know, how do you know that you're supporting something that's actually treating the animals well? The very first thing to look for is, are they touching the cats? Are they posing with the cats? Are they posting pictures of themselves touching cats? Because all of that is just ego. That is not in the benefit of the cat because it makes other people want to do the same thing. And that's what drives all of the abuse. I know I'm opening myself up to like, what should the media do differently question here? But like, how culpable do you think the media is in mm -hmm. this? Everyone and their mother has booked Jack Hanna and company a thousand times and we've seen Everybody, every network, you know, you were, I think you were very even handed showing everything from like Rachel Ray to <laughs> late night TV show and everything in between. How, how much has that helped just keep this thing going? Uh, I can tell you right off the bat, I'm, I'm really a per person that pushes on that monkey see monkey do uh, mentality. When people see it, when you see the so jackass years ago, as a paramedic, we had jackass type injuries because we knew from that point on that show would be over. As soon as it was over, people were out jumping off a building or rolling down or stapling themselves. So as a monkey see, monkey do kind of mentality, 101 Dalmatians, go out and buy a Dalmatian pup immediately after you see it. That's what happens when people have a tiger cub on somebody's lap. Now, I honestly believe a lot of the hosts on these shows really didn't know what was going on. They thought they had a true conservationist. They were lied to. We were lied to. I don't like that. I don't like it when people are lied to. I was lied to for all those years till I evolved into what I am now. Now it takes some trauma to do that. Now this documentary may not be trauma, but it's gonna be educational and people are gonna wake up and, and, and hold their heads and say, I've been fooled, I've been lied to. Tim, what's that like being on the front lines when you get that call that there's a tiger in the basement? And you have to go respond to that. Like, what is going through, as, as a former law enforcement official, like, what is going through your mind as you're knocking that door to, to, to figure out what's behind it? Yeah, years ago, I've been doing this for 47 years, and it's been steadily getting worse. Now, uh, Carol's younger than me. She's, she's a young, young, young lady. I'm an older gentleman <laughs> that's so. been around for a while. And it was one of those situations where when it first started happening, I'm scared to death. I'm literally scared to death because nobody else is showing up. It was just me and my, my team, and that's it. Because you can't get the zoos to come out. You won't get anybody else to come off that property to help you. So it's, it's fear. As it went on, I became more successful at what I'm doing, humanely-wise, and my, nobody was getting hurt. I have not killed an animal the entire 47 years. None, wow. zero. And we were able to do this with help like Carol Baskin, Big Cat Rescue, organizations like that across the country now to step up and help. I've got a comfort zone now that I know I've got backup coming now from the, the Big Cat uh, Sanctuary Alliance. All I gotta do is make a phone call and a team will be there for me. It's not like I have to sit around and, and sweat it anymore. As you saw, I, we have not seen The Elephant in the Living Room, the original one, it was done. Please check that one out too. That was, uh, that's, it's, I think it's on Amazon Prime. But that shows you, I couldn't find anybody at that time to take the lions I had because everybody was filled up. Everybody was filled to the brim. 
So I couldn't find anybody. And it just made it to a point, I'm sitting there at night, just shaking. What am I gonna do with these lions? And that's what was got to a point from being fear, to being mad, to being really pissed off, I hate to say that, to being to a point now, I got comfort. And I can't say enough about the teams that's out there right now. We've got unbelievable teams of people to help now. We need the law passed. Carol, I want to ask you a question about like your last year and change. You have had such ups and downs. Tiger King was a lot. You've been on Dancing with the Stars. You've become a household name. You were in a Megan the Stallion lyric. I mean, you've had quite a run this last year and a half. If this law gets passed because of your higher, you know, profile in part to you, was it all worth it? Like everything you've endured this last year and a half, if it, if it, it helps to get this law past the goalpost, are you like, it's, it's absolutely worth it. Getting the big cat public safety act passed is the only thing that will have made this past year worth it. <laughs>